Bar crossings are a high risk boating activity, even for the most experienced boating. There are three types of bars. There's dangerous, there's very dangerous, and there's extremely dangerous. Now this film will provide you with information on how to make a safer bar crossing. But if in doubt, don't go out. I'm Matt Collicott. I'm a professional skipper and have been working in and out of harbours around New Zealand for nearly 20 years. The most important part of a skipper's job is to make decisions that will keep everyone safe. Decisions that will ensure that everyone gets home after a good day out. Hi, my name's Dave. I've been a member of the Coast Guard for 15 years. Today I'll be crewing with Matt as we cross the bar. This film will highlight the key steps needed to cross a bar safely. Throughout this film, we're going to show you examples of crossing a variety of different bars. The first thing you need to understand, what is a bar and why they can be so dangerous to cross. A bar is a build up of sand outside the entrance of a river or harbour mouth. Bars are formed and they continually change with the shifts of sand and silt throughout the area. Weather, current and tide conditions over the bar cause waves that break in an unpredictable pattern. This creates an unstable and hazardous environment for even the most experienced Bodhi. Every bar is different, so it's really important to familiarise yourself with the local features of the bar that you're planning to cross. Differences include things such as the bar width, its length, the depth, the amount of water that comes in and out of the harbour on each tide, changing channels, in differing land features amongst other things. Your local Coast Guard unit is a good source of information and advice. Planning on dry land before you get on the water plays a big part in safety. Preparing to cross the bar always starts at home. You need to check the weather, tides and get local information. Make sure that you have the right equipment and that it's in good condition. Always have a plan B ready, just in case the bar or the sea conditions mean it's unsafe to cross. Your plan B could be to go another day, go to a different location or not go at all. Always check the weather forecast on the day you're planning to head out. There are two key things to look at, wind and swell. This information can be found on a number of websites including Met Service, or you can get up-to-date information from your local Nowcasting VHF channel. Find out your local Nowcasting VHF channel by talking to your local Coast Guard or visit the Coast Guard website. It's important to know when the tide times are, both for heading out and coming back across the bar. Plan a timeline for your trip based on the tide times and remember to always avoid bar crossings at night. When going out, as a general rule, the best time to go is any time within three hours before high tide. All other times should be avoided. When planning your return across the bar, as a general rule, up to three hours before high tide and one and a half hours after high tide are optimum. All other times should be avoided. Never cross a bar at low tide. Before you leave, make sure someone knows where you're going and when you'll be back. Next you need to check your boat and equipment. You will need to take with you a life jacket for each person, two forms of waterproof communications, GPS and chart, a bucket or a bilge pump for bailing, an appropriate anchoring system, and a backup form of propulsion, for example oars or a secondary outboard. Remember to secure gear and any loose objects. This ensures that they don't become flying missiles when you're out on the water. After checking your equipment, do a thorough boat check. Check your engine, battery and bilge pump are all working well. Make sure that you have enough fuel. Use the third, third, third rule for fuel. Have a third for the trip out, a third for the trip home and a third spare just in case things don't go to plan. 
Prior to getting to the boat ramp, head to a place to observe the bar conditions and to plan your route across. Turn on your local Nowcasting VHF channel. This is to double check the conditions and confirm whether they are likely to change throughout the day. At the boat ramp, check your gear is still secure. Double check your fuel and make sure your breather is open on your tote tank. And of course, don't forget to put your bung in. Go over the safety equipment. Let everybody know where it is and how to use it. Get everyone to put on their life jackets. Inflatable life jackets are great. Making sure somebody on board knows how to use all the safety equipment is great backup, just in case something happens to you as a skipper. It's a really good idea to run your engine for at least 10 minutes prior to getting to the bar. Once you're underway, do a trip report with the Coast Guard. Head to a place where it's safe to stay and assess the bar. We're at a point now where we can assess the bar. First I'm looking for obstacles in or on the water, things like kite surfers, fishermen, other vessels, logs, buoys or beacons. Now I'm going to watch the waves. These waves will come in sets. Our assessment of the bar could take up to 20 minutes. So we've been out here for about 10 minutes and we've had a really, really good look. A bar with a breaking wave or white water across the entire channel should never be crossed in an open boat. Once you've made your assessment and decided to cross the bar, do a bar watch report with the Coast Guard. Your call will be logged and Coast Guard will take action if you do not close your report within 20 minutes. Identify the channel, choose the calmest place to cross and always avoid breaking waves. You need to know the navigation markers for the bar you are planning to cross. Some bars have leading lights or beacons. To cross the bar safely, make sure you get this local knowledge. Brief your crew on what's going on. Tell them where to stand, make sure they hold on. Tell them to stay in the same place as people moving around your vessel will create instability. Make sure everyone has three points of contact. If you're waiting, watch other vessels cross the bar, but do not assume they know what they're doing. Only one boat should cross the bar at any time. Watch for a lull in the waves. Once you have committed to crossing the bar, you are committed. Never turn around on a bar. If you turn around on a bar, a wave can hit you side on, which can easily capsize any vessel. Approach the wave straight on. Proceed with enough speed to make safe headway. Slow down as you reach the wave, but make sure you have enough momentum to carry you to the top of the wave, so you can gently come off the back of it. One of the most common mistakes made when crossing the bar is exiting the channel of the bar too soon. Exiting too early will mean that you could be caught side on by a wave. You will know when you have safely crossed the bar because the water will tend to become deeper and calmer. It is a good idea to enter a GPS waypoint here so that you can use this mark as your safe assessment point when returning back across the bar. Close your bar watch report when you have safely completed your crossing. When returning across the bar, go back to that GPS waypoint and watch the bar. Before committing to returning back across the bar, you need to ask yourself, are the conditions safe? Is the tide suitable? If the bar is unsafe to return across, or if you are unsure, wait or use your plan B. 
Again, secure all loose objects and remind your crew to hold on and stay in the same place while crossing. Assess the waves. Again, identify the local channel markers to help you navigate your vessel back across the bar safely. Pick a wave to cross the bar. You need to stick with one wave, no fooling around with any other waves. Stay focused on what's ahead. One of your crew can keep a lookout behind to let you know if the wave behind you is catching up with you. If you don't stay with the wave you've chosen, your boat will fall behind, risking the next wave catching up with you and capsizing your vessel. Ensure you proceed straight on at an adequate speed. You will know when you have safely crossed the bar because the water will tend to become calmer. and you are back in safe, calm water. Remember to close your trip report when you're safely back at the boat ramp. Now you've learnt some really useful tools to help you safely navigate your vessel across a bar. Never attempt bar crossings without knowledge and experience. Head out with someone who knows what they're doing. Remember, always approach bar crossing with the right attitude of caution. If at any point the conditions or your checklist don't add up, postpone your trip for another time or day, or choose to go boating somewhere else. As a skipper, you are responsible for everyone's safety. You need to make sure you can get everyone home safely after your trip out on the water. Respect the bar, and if in doubt, don't go out.